everyone welcome again to the episode of tax training today i will discuss to you about how to compute income tax for bloggers under the train law income from monetization of blog there are so many bloggers today and it's about time that we will discuss the income tax due from this income the bloggers receive income from advertisement or monetization of their blogs so we will define what is taxable income or purposes of computing the income tax of bloggers. Taxable income refers to the pertinent items of gross income specified in the code, less deductions, if any, authorized for such types of income by the code or other special law. For this episode, I try to make itemized deductions, the chart of accounts for bloggers. Uh, so I choose some kind of itemized deductions that fits to the expenses of bloggers. So gross receipts refer to the total amount of money or its equivalent representing the contract price, compensation, service fee, rental or royalty including the amount charged for materials supplied with the services and deposits and advance payments actually or constructively received during the taxable period for the services performed or to be performed for another person except returnable security deposits for purposes of these regulations this is important in the case of what taxpayer this shall exclude the VAT component so for VAT taxpayer gross receipts for income tax purposes does not include the value added tax okay, there are three ways to compute income of bloggers so number one is the eight percent option rate Second, 40% optional standard deductions, and the third is the itemized deductions. And here is, are the rates of income tax under the train law. So for January 2003 onwards, the income tax rates is from 0 to 35%. But as of now, the tax under the train law, January 2018 to December 2022, here are the tax rates also 0 to 35 percent okay so we will use these uh, graduated rates under the train law this january 2018 to december 2022 20, rates so for option one the eight percent op option rate who are qualified to opt for this eight percent option rate under section 3 of rr8-2018 it provides that the taxpayer who signifies his intention to avail of the 8% income tax rate option. So how, how does the taxpayer uh, signify his intention to avail of the 8% option rate? The taxpayer should go or the blogger should go to the BAR and register the option rate by informing the BAR that he opted for the option rate hereby getting away or telling them that they want to avail of the option rate so that the percentage tax will no longer be tax type in the certificate of registration. If the blogger is conclusively qualified for the seat option at the end of the taxable year, meaning the annual gross sales or receipts and other non-operating income did, did not exceed the VAT threshold of 3 million, shall compute the 8% annual income tax due based on the actual annual gross sales or receipts and other non-operating income. So the same income tax due shall be in lieu of the graduated rates of income tax and the percentage tax under section 116 of the tax code as amended. So the 8% payment of the blogger, if he opted for the 8% uh, option rate, represent already the two kind of taxes, the percentage tax and the income tax. So the financial statements is not required to be attached in filing the final income tax return if you opt for the option rate. However, existing rules and regulations of bookkeeping and invoicing receipting shall still apply, meaning the blogger should have maintained the books of accounts and issue receipts for the uh, transactions for the gross receipts or for the services that he rendered or for the income that he received. Okay, so we have the illustration for 8% option rate. For example, a blogger has a gross receipt from blogging of 2,400,000 for the year. Uh, since he opted for the 8% option rate, the allowable deduction is only 250,000. Why 250,000? Because this is the amount 
which is not taxable or 0%. The rate is 0%. So we have to uh, deduct the 250,000 in order that we can have the amount subject to the 8%. So allowable deduction is 250,000. Deduct it from the 2,400,000, we have taxable income of 2,150,000. So the tax due of 8% is 172,000. So if the blogger has an income of 2,400,000 and he opted for the 8% option rate, that the income tax that he's going to pay is 172,000, which represents the income tax and the percentage tax. So option number two, the 40% optional standard deductions okay a 40 percent optional standard deduction shall be allowed as a deduction from the gross receipts to arrive at the taxable income of the taxpayer blogger so using the same example a blogger has two million four hundred thousand income so computation gross receipts two million four hundred thousand less 40 percent optional standard deductions so we have nine hundred sixty thousand that this is forty percent of two million four hundred thousand so the taxable income using this 40% uh, optional standard deduction is 1,440,000. And how much is the tax due? 322,000. How do we compute it? We apply the tax rate. For, for 800,000, the tax is 130,000. And the tax on 640,000 is 192,000. So the total is 322,000. We apply the graduated rate under the train law effective January 2018 up to December 2022. For option number three, we have itemized deductions. I prepare this chart of accounts because I consider what are the uh, deductions, what are the expenses common to the blogger. So these are the expenses that I consider expenses of the bloggers. So for the direct cost of the services, I have internet connection, example 312,500. This is for one taxable year. This is for one year. So light and water, 480,000. Rental of studio, 600,000. Production staff, 1,920,000. Communication, 420,000. Transportation, 575,000. Apparels, 880,000. Depreciation, production equipments, 750,000. The total direct cost of services is 5,937,500. And I also list down the itemized deduction for operating expenses, which I know is common also to bloggers. So number one, is taxes and licenses. Why? Because you want your, your business would be illeg illegal if you are not paying any taxes and licenses. Salaries, this is salary of the admin officer or those staff who are uh, in the office. So taxes and licenses, 490,000. Salaries, 900,000. Utilities, 650,000. Office supplies, 320,000. Communication, 280,000. Transportation, 190,000 depreciation furniture and fixtures 300,000 miscellaneous expenses 220,000 the total operating expenses in my example is 3,350,000 so how are we going to compute for the income tax due gross receipts from tagging my example is 14,750,000 this is for one year less direct cost of services I have uh, itemized the direct cost of services, the 5,937,500. So it uh, gives us a gross profit of 8,812,500. And we have operating expenses of 3,350,000. I give you also the list. So total taxable income is 5,462,500. Since the blogger has much money and it's in the bank, it earns interest. So I add up also the other taxable income, which is interest income, 375,000. So total income subject to tax is 5,887,500. So the presumption of this interest income that it is not subjected to 
final tax because if it is subjected to final tax, the interest income is not taxable in the ordinary income. So the income tax on the total income of 5,837,500 which is taxable, the tax due thereon is computed as follows. For the tax on the 2,490,000 and the tax on 3,837,500 multiplied by 32% is 1,151,250. So the total tax due is 1,641,250. So this is the uh, tax that the blogger should pay as income tax. Reminder for the income of blogger who is a minor, the ones liable to pay the income tax is the parent or contact. So this is up for our episode for today. Hope we give you another information. Thank you for watching. Please stay tuned to another uh, episode of our task training. Please like, share, subscribe, and share to others so that they may also learn. Our purpose here is for you to have a better task compliance. Thank you.